The Girl Who Spun Gold by Virginia Hamilton. Artwork by Leo and Diane Dillon. There be this tale told about a tiny fellow who could hide in a foot of shade amid old trees. All that most could see of him was the way he sparkled. Some say he wore a pointy hat. He had one true leg. The other leg stood straight out stiff and was made of wood. He had a long tail. He could fly through the air. Tis true. He had magic. And when the shade danced with flecks of gold, it was the little fellow himself, Leetman, going about his mischief. Anybody and everybody old like the trees knew how he could appear and disappear, and they knew enough to stay out of his shade. One day, young Big King came riding amidst the trees. And just then, Leetman was hiding in the shade, watching a lovely girl spinning plain thread. She and her mama were laughing and talking loud when Big King turned his horses and stopped before them. Says he, Here, what's all this noise in my kingdom? Well, the mama, thinking fast, says, Oh, great big king, my daughter is spinning a whole field of finest golden thread to make cloth for his highest, and we are so happy we are rejoicing about it, don't you know? Well, if that's true, said the king, I will have to marry your daughter, who is very beautiful, and she will be my queen. Quashiba was the daughter's name. She was upset at her mama's terrible fib, for she spun only the plainest thread. And how would she weave a whole field of cloth? Shyly now, Quashiba looked up from her spinning wheel to smile on the handsome king, and he smiled back. Soon a wedding day was arranged for them. Oh, it came quickly. There was cake and all oh, so good food, baking bread, roasted goat, and chickens cooking. For a while, the mama forgot what she had said about the golden thread. She was so very happy for her daughter. And the whole kingdom was decked with flowers and all turned out for a splendid wedding day. The two got married, they did. Everybody called out their names, Big King, Queen Quashiba. It was if the, as if the sound of fresh wind rolled out of the hills and washed over the land. Big King, Queen Quashiba, hooray! Well, Big King had to become even bigger than he needed to be. Being young, he went too far. He told Quashiba, said, You can have everything, spreading his arms wide. You can have fine robes, gowns, and friends to call upon you. But after the year ends, and one day more, you will start spinning golden dread. You hear me? You must start weaving me three whole rooms of golden things. The king left her there with her mother. Oh, la, cried the mama. You hear that, Queenie Quashi? That's what she called her own sweet daughter. I am so sorry for what I said. Oh, I'm afraid for you. Never you mind, mama, Queenie Quashi said. Never you sorrow, my dearie dear. You will see. Big King Man will forget about it. The golden stuff he wants me to spin be such a long time coming. All was best and good for a year and a day. Queen Quashiba had footmen and headmen. She had pie makers and cake bakers. She made her handmaids spin the threads. All bad was forgotten. Until one day, Big King came and took her to a room as large as a playing field. 
Better have this room spun full of golden thread and cloth and things by dawn, said he, else you stay cooped up in here forever and a year. He padlocked the iron door against her. Tears ran down Kwashiba's face. She was so sad and afraid, trembling all over, for she only knew how to spin plain thread. But, oh, shh! Hearing a noise, she peered around, and there a tiny man came floating. He was all over ugly for true. He grinned at Kwashiba. He bowed grandly to her, standing on the air, and tipped the tall green hat he wore. It was Leetman himself, the tiny shade fellow. His wooden leg never bended. He wore striped trousers, and he had a long tail that swung this away and that away. Poor Kwashiba was more frightened than ever. Leetman spoke. Girl, what's the matter, you? said kindly enough. So Queen Kwashiba quieted her fear and told him her own true name and all the good and the bad that had happened to her. I'll help you with making golden things, he said, but you must guess my whole name. And if I can't guess it, Queen Kwashiba asked. You have three nights to try and three chances each night. And if you can't guess my name by the final night and the last chance, then I will make you tiny, just like me. I will carry you off to live in my shade. Queen Kwashiba couldn't stand to be near the little fellow, but sweetly she said, I thank you kindly. I will be naming you within the three nights and with the chances that you've given me. Good, cried Litman. He began singing and twirling his tail and flying round and round the big room, big as a field. Kwashiba got so sleepy with all his sashaying up and down that she yawned twice and fell to slumber. By and by, she awoke. All was dark with the moonlight creeping through her windows. Litman was right there, bowing and grinning. The room big as a field soon shone, full of golden thread and cloth and things to the ceiling. And Litman spoke then, softly, Queenie Kwashi, what's my name? Wide-eyed, Kwashiba thought hard. Your name be Septimus, she said at last. No, ah, shouted he. Then your name must be Obadiah. No, ah, Leetman laughed the hat off his head. Did, put it back on. Queen Kwashiba thought about it and thought about it. Jimmy Jamma, she shouted. Leetman hollered out loud, Noah! Oh, no, no, no! He doubled over laughing. Hee hee! He leaped up and flew out of there. Dawnlight and Big Kid came and unlocked Kwashiba's room. There was all the gold cloth, bright as the sun. Big King was so happy he kissed Kwashiba's hand. Later, he led her into another room. Fill this room with gold! he commanded, and he padlocked her in and left her there, all alone. Queen Kwashiba stood feeling bad when there came the little man through the open window. He brought her food and water, and while she tried to eat, he flew as easily as a feather floating. Bowing, he grinned and twirled. It made Kwashiba so dizzy she pushed the food away. Poor child, she fell asleep in her chair just before the night came down. Later it was when she came wide awake at some sound. Leetman was there, showing his toothy grin. The room was filled clear up, clear down, and all around with gold thread and cloth and things. 
There were gold mirrors, and they showed Lipman made of winking gold flecks. Good evening, my queenie. Now what is my name? Lipman asked her. Quashiba said right back, Your name is Nicholas. He said, Noah. Then it must be Nehemiah. And he said again, Noah, oh Noah, sounded like sighing. Quashiba frowned and said, never could get him. Noah, the little fellow man laughed and laughed and rose up and flew away. Big Kim, Big King came, saw the second room full of golden stuff. He was so happy he asked his poor wife to have supper with him. The servants brought a feast of hog and apples with plantains, fish and coconuts, red beans and rice. Queen Quashiba was so happy to be out of that room. Big King looked happy too. He was proud of her, he said. So smart are you to know how to spin golden dreads. They ate and laughed and talked. He told her about something he'd seen. I'm out hunting wild hogs this day, he said. In the woods I am, and I come upon a big hole in the ground at the foot of a tree. And down in this hole, there stands a funny little man with a wooden leg and striped trousers on and wearing a tall green hat. He has a tail and he's dancing on his best leg, singing a song. I sat very still to listen. My name be Litman Litman. Hey, oh, oh, Litman, Litman, be me. Quashiba's eyes opened wide. Her mouth formed an O in surprise. The king had to laugh. Well, he was a funny fellow. He had more to sing about than he did. What? Quashiba asked breathlessly. This Litman, he spoke on about himself said Big King. My name be Litman. I am not tall, but I'm quite short, sang he. Dear Mota said to me, you are the magic one, my forever favorite Litman Bitun. Litman Bitun, whispered the queen. Oh, la! Comical little fellow he was for true, said the king. After they had eaten, Big, Big King told her, Last time, Kwashiba, just one more room of gold, please, now. Good night, he said, and he padlocked the door. But Kwashiba wouldn't say a word. Angry she was at the king for treating her so. Angry also at the creature of magic, Litman Bitun. For in the room, soon as the door was locked, Litman flew through the open window to her side. He grinned. He bowed and said, This be your last chance, my queenie. You better get my name right, or I am going to make you an itty bitty quashi, tinier than me. He danced around her, and he sang and twirled his tail, and Queen Quashiba fell fast asleep on the floor. She woke up soon, oh yes. Of course, the room was full to bursting with golden stuffs. Litman was right there, sitting on top of the high gold pile. Spoke he, Queenie Quashi, guess you well this time. You only have three chances. If you don't know my name, you will be forever shaded and ever so small. His tail whirled round and round so fast, Quashiba lost sight of it. And she said, your name is squash em up Noah! And tail whizzing through the air, two more guesses. Your name must be, no, must be Terdondor. No, it's not. You better think good this one last time. And so Quashiba thought good and strong. 
She put hands to hips and reared back. She told him, Your name be? Be Litman Bitun. Yes, the name your mother gave you, you ugly, silly, tiny thing. Ah, see! Litman gave out a screech so loud it turned the moon around. The hat jumped off his head. His ears fell off. Pop up, he goes in a million bitty tiny flecks of gold that flowed into the night and disappeared. Real loud noise was Litman Bitun going. He sounded like hot grease in a wet skillet as all of him vanished in the dark. There was left a scent of burning feathers. That was all. Queen Quashiba would not talk to Big King for three long years and three long fields full of him saying, Forgive me, my Queen Quashiba. I was so greedy to ask for golden things. I have buried every padlock in our kingdom. And that's the story told. They say Queen Quashiba finally forgave Big King, and they lived fairly happily ever after. But never again did anyone old like the trees see sparkly Litman Bitun in the shade. Some elders say he comes near, still, dancing and floating above our heads. And when is that? Don't you know? Every time, they say, when his tale be told. The end.